Welcome. Today I am analyzing companies which are into ceramics, sanitary wear and manufacturing of tiles. The company that I am going to explain about are Kajeria and Sera Sanitary Wear. Kajeria was incorporated in 1985 and it manufactures floor and wall tiles and it also sells sanitary wear products. This is a leading floor and wall tile manufacturer in, in India and it is also the largest player in the Indian tile industry and it has a huge distribution network. The sales of these company is approximately 11 to 12 percent of the Indian tile ma market wherein the share of the organized player itself is close to around 50 percent. Whereas Sera Sanitary Wear has an established presence in the sanitary wear industry and it is the second largest player with around 25% market share in the organized domestic sanitary wear industry. It not only supplies to the retail market but also directly supplies it to various construction companies. It has a strong marketing and distribution setup and South India is the largest contributor to its revenues. Now let us look at the challenges and threats or risks these companies face. This industry is a very competitive industry with numerous unorganized players as well as several large players in the organized segment. Due to moderation in demand, especially from the real estate companies, that may result in pricing pressure and low offtake for various manufacturers. Profitability is vulnerable to any increase in the prices of raw materials and fuel and the combination of these two categories forms a major part of the cost structure. If the consumer sentiment dampens, then these companies may not be able to pass on the increase to its customers, which in turn reduces its profit margins. Next, let us look at the ratios of these companies to understand the overall health. In today's video, I am analyzing companies like Kajaria Ceramics, Sera Sanitary Wear, Somani Ceramics, Asian Granito and HSIL. Results are up to date till June 2019 quarter as well as March 2019 financial year. Let us begin the analysis with the current market price and adjust the current market price with its face value of 10. Kajaria Ceramics price was 561 and the face value was 1. So there is a split in the shares. So we need to adjust it to 10 so that we can compare all of these stocks against each other. So the adjusted price is 5,600. Sarah's adjusted price is 5,200. Somani is at 945 rupees. Asian Granito, there is no split in the shares, shares face value. So the pri adjusted price and the current market price is the same. Asian Granito's adjusted price and the current market price is the same because there is no split in the shares. HSIL price is 204. The price itself wouldn't tell us anything about the stock. Next let us look at how the market cap has changed from 5 years back as well as from where it was 3 years back. Kajuria's latest market cap is 8,900 crores. Five years back it was available for 2,600 CR and three years back it increased to 7,600 CR. So we see that the overall valuation of the company has been increasing from where it was five years back to where it was three years back and current. So we see a growth in its value in the market. So this is very important to see growth in the company's valuation in the market. Sarah's growth was also there from 5 years back 1100 CR almost doubled to 2300 CR three, 3 years back and the current valuation is at 3300 CR. 
So again a growth from the projected periods. So money current market cap is at 800 CR. Five years back it was at 629. So it has seen a jump from where it was five years back. But if you notice from three years back it has seen a fall. So it is somewhere in midway between where it was five years back and three years back. So again as I said we want a series of growth in market value of the company. Asian Granito has seen a growth from both its five years and three years period. In fact it was available at just 59 CR five years back and it increased a lot to 338 CR in market cap three years back and now currently it's trading at 680 CR. So this company has seen quite a growth in its market value. HSIL in turn has seen a fall in its market value where it was three years back at 2000 CR. Today it is available at just 295 CR. That's a one tenth of its market value three years back. Even from five years back, it was available at 864 CR and it has seen a quite a drop to 295 CR. So this is not a good value to look at for investors when they want to buy into a company. We want to see a constant growth in the value of the company. In this chart, we will look at how the price has moved from where it was one year back. So this will help us understand if there has been a substantial fall in the valuation within this one year. Kajaria's price one year back was approximately 650 and the current market price is 561. So there has been a fall but it just a small drop of around 14%. So this is a good value to look at because this shows an inherent strength in the company's stock. Sarah's fall was around 19%, again a good value from 3195 52 weeks back to 2600 today. Asian Granito is also seen around 18% of fall from 275 to 226. Sumani and HSIL on the other hand have seen a huge fall in their overall price from 472 it has fallen 60% to 189 and HSIL has fallen 55%. So a fall in the price of the stock within one year shows some kind of weakness that these companies are facing because of which the market participants have devalued the share price. Now looking at one year drop we also look at how the price has grown or if there was a degrowth in price from where it was five years back and where it was three years back. Basically we are trying to understand how the price has moved from where it was five years and three years back. So this will help us understand the projected growth rate in price as a direct way of understanding that we are not buying very expensive in terms of growth in price. Kajaria's fall was 14% from one year back but has seen a 238% growth rate over a period of five years or approximately 2.3 times over a period of five years. On an average if you divide 238 by five years every year the price has moved by around 47 percent. So this was a growth in the price or gain for the investors every year since last five years. From three years back it has increased by just 17 percent. So if you divide 17 by 3 this is the projected growth rate from five years from three years back at 5.6 percent. So for three from three years back we're getting it at just 17 percent rise. So this is good value. Sarah's growth over a period of five years was 200 percent or two times. That's approximately around 40 percent every year since last five years. 
whereas in the recent three years has seen a 200% rise from where it was five years back. So that's an approximately around 40% of gain in price. From three years back it has increased by 42%. So we are getting it at a very good valuation when we look at the price growth for three years. So money has seen a 60% drop in its price from 52 weeks back or one year back approximately. But from five years back it has grown at the rate of 27%. So we are getting it at a rise of around 27% from five years back price. So this is a good opportunity. We are getting at a good valuation in terms of price. But from three years back current price has seen a fall of 52%. So not only has it fallen 60% from where it was one year back, but it has fallen 52% from where it was three years back. So as regards to valuation, this is a good value to look at. Asian Granito has fallen 18%, just like Kajoria and Sera. But if you look at the growth in price over a period of five years, the price has moved up very quickly to 1000%, which is almost 2.5 times every year on an average. So we don't want to buy into a company if the growth in the price is very high. That means we would be buying at a very steep price. Even though it has fallen just 18% here or even though it has gone up by 101% from 3 years back, still we would not want to buy this company because from 5 years back the price has been growing up at a very high pace. HSIL has seen a fall from all the 3 levels. From 1 year back it has fallen 55%. From 5 years back it has fallen 66%. So today it is even below its 5 years price and has fallen 66% even below where it was 5 years back. And from 3 years back it has fallen 85%. So very steep falls for all the 3 projected price points. Next let us understand what is the profit these companies have generated on the share price we paid. Kajuria Ceramics, we paid 560 rupees and company earned a profit of 14 rupees on it. That's a return of 2.6% or an yield of 2.6%. Now if we had in invested the same amount in a bank, the bank would give us approximately 5 to 7% risk-free interest on our investment. So we should expect at least that kind of a return on our investments in shares. So this is quite low. Sarah's price was 2600 and company's earnings were just 87 rupees per share. That's a low yield of 3.4%. Sumani has given an yield of 5.7% which is above our benchmark of a risk-free interest rate. On a price of 189, the current EPS is 10 rupees, which is an yield of 5.7%. Asian Granito's yield is again low at 3.9% and HSIL's yield is the highest because the price as we saw earlier has fallen quite steeply from all the three price points. So the current market price is 40 rupees and the company's earnings per share was 3 rupee 40 paise which works out to an yield of 8.4 percent. Price to earnings ratio or a PE ratio tells us how many times more we are paying for the earnings of the company. So Kajoria we are paying 37 times more for the earnings of the company. The company earned around 14 rupees in 2019 but the price to gain that earnings 
is 560 rupees so investors have to invest 560 rupees to get the profit of 14 rupees per share that's a 37.8 times multiple which is very high my benchmark is 25 times that is as investors we should not pay more than 25 times the earnings of the company Sarah's price earning multiple was 29.8 times again high so money was at 14.5 Asian granito at 26 times again a high value and HSIL was the lowest at 3.6 times the lower it is the better the valuation is but that is not the whole thing we also have to consider each and every ratio to understand the overall health of the company HSIL's price was 40 rupees and the earnings were 3 rupee 40 paise which is an yield of 3.6 times now rather it is the price earning of 3.6 times but if you look price is 40 divided by 3.4 that is the earnings does not work out to 3.6 the catch here is that this EPS that we are looking here that excludes any extraordinary gains the company may have received in 2019 so all earning values are excluding the extraordinary or exceptional gains now to understand the price earning that we saw for Kajari and Sarah which was quite high at 37.8 times and 29.8 times of the recent 12 months we have to compare this price to earnings ratio with its averages of 5 and 3 years that will help us understand where the historically this price to earnings has been when compared to the current price earning so Kajaria on an average from 5 years has been trading at 35.1 times multiple of its earnings and in three years the average was around 37.7 times so the company has always been trading at a high price earning multiple and the current 12 months price to earnings multiple was 37.8 times so very nearby to where its averages were so this will be considered a good price earning ratio although it is high that is why I've given it a negative value Sierra sanitary wear on an average has been trading between 36.3 to 36.7 for both 5 and 3 years and the current price earning multiple is below both its averages again a good opportunity to buy into the company so money current PE is trading at a heavy discount of almost 50 percent below its averages of 32 and 33.6 times for both five and three years asian granito is trading slightly above its three years average and around six times more or rather six points more above its five years average of 20.5 times so this is also slightly expensive HSIL has been trading on an average at around 25 times since last 5 years and 3 years but currently it is available at just 3.6 times the markets have discounted heavily its price and the price to earnings has now come down to just 3.6 times a huge fall from where it was trading on an average basis next let us look at the product of price earning and price book and according to Benjamin Graham he says that the product of these two should not be more than 22.5 times that is if you multiply both of them that is price earning of 15 and the price book of 1.5 it should not exceed 22.5 so any conservative user or investor who wants to invest in a stock 
should be not paying or should not pay more than 15 times its earnings and 1.5 times its book value. Kajaria, the product is very high at 213 times. The price earning of the recent 12 months is 37.8 times and the price book is 5.7 times. So both the PE as well as the PB are both expensive. Sera Sanitary Wear is also around similar situation of 143 times and the price earning is 29.8 times and price book is 4.8 times again expensive. So money is available at 19.1 times below the Graham's formula and the price earning is 14.5 price book is 1.3 a good valuation Asian Granito 26 times price earning and 1.5 times book value the product is 39.3 which is again more than 22.5 HSIL available at a steep discount of 0.7 times the price earning is 3.6 and the price book is 0.2 times now we have to understand the valuation wise it's okay but we also need to look at the profitability ratio the growth metrics the cash flow statement valuation is one part of it where we want to buy as cheap as possible but just because something is low in value does not mean it's a quality stuff we need to keep a balance between both the quality as well as how much we pay for that quality in this chart we are looking at the profit and how that profit is growing over a period of five years and over a period of three years that will give us a good overview of how the company company's profits have been growing from a particular period Kajuria Ceramics profits have been growing at the rate of 13.3% since 5 years back and this growth is good because my benchmark is that the profits of our companies should be growing at at least 10% and above every year. The thing to keep in mind here is this is the compounded growth and not the average growth. There is a difference between the two. In the last 3 years there has been a degrowth in its profit by 0.3%. Three years back, whatever was the profit from there, the profit has fallen now by 0.3%. So the profit is less than what it was three years back. So this is a negative. Sera Sanitary Wear for both five years back as well as three years back, the profit today has grown by 17.2% and 11.6% when we look at the five years and three years growth rate. So money has grown its profits at the rate of 13.1% since last 5 years. But in the recent 3 years it has seen a big fall or a degrowth in its profit of 7.4%. So if the profit was 100 3 years back, now the profit is even below that by 7.4%. Asian Granitos profit over a period of 5 years at least is above the 10% benchmark. But in the recent three years, it has seen a fall of 4.1%. This is not a loss, but a reduction in what the company is earning as profit from where it was three years back. HSIL's profit over the period of five years is low at 3.9%. But in the recent three years, it has seen a very heavy fall in its profit by 16.4%. So this is a negative Next, let us look at the price earning to profit growth rate ratio, that is the PEG ratio. This is a very important ratio. If you are looking at price earning and if we are be, uh, taking a decision to invest in a company based on price earning, then we have to also look at the PEG ratio. So there are two ways. One is we use the price earning. If the price earning is expensive, it's okay. But then is there a growth in that earnings also? That also is very important to understand. So Kajaria Ceramics was available 
at 37.8 times more than what it earned as profit. So this is very high. But are we getting a growth in that earnings? So there is a growth of 13.3% over a period of 5 years. Now we are going to project this growth in profit of 13.3% over the next future 5 years to understand if whatever price earning multiple we are paying is that justified. So the PEG works out to 2.9, 37.8 divided by 13.3. So this is quite high. What I would want is that if you're paying a high multiple for Kajiria Ceramics, we should also get a high growth rate in that earnings. And if the earnings are not growing, then the multiple that we are paying for this company is not justified. Sera Sanitary Wear multiple is 1.7, again above my benchmark of 1.5. Although we are paying 29.8 times, we are getting a growth rate of 17.2% in its profit or earnings. Sumani Ceramics 1.4 PEG again a good value because although we are paying 14.5 times a low price earning a price earning multiple but we are also getting a high growth rate of around 13.1% so this is justified. Asian Granito again expensive 26 times price earning but only 12.4% of growth rate in its earnings. HSIL expensive at 3 PEG this is because although we are paying a very low price earning multiple of 3.6 times and we are getting a profit growth of 3.9 percent actually it should have been one here but because this profit value one thing that we should understand here is this profit values in all the charts are excluding extraordinary and exceptional gains that the company may have done in a particular year. So that has been excluded. So that is why the PEG works out to somewhere around 3. So this is also expensive. Next, let us compare the price earning with the profit growth in the 3 years and then understand if that price earning is justified. So we are looking at both the price earning of and comparing it with the growth of both 5 years and 3 years. Kajaria Ceramics, again we are paying 37.8 times but we are not getting any growth in that earnings since 3 years. In fact, there is a degrowth. So the PEG falls down to 147. Sierra Sanitary Wear, 29.8 times price earning and 11.6% growth rate in its profits. So this price earning is justified but it's still quite high at 2.6. Sumani is again negative because there is a degrowth in its profit. In fact, Asian Granito as well as HSIL all have seen a degrowth in their profits over a period of three years or from where the profit was three years back. So these are all very expensive when we look at the projection of profit growth from three years. Next, let us look at what is the compounded growth in sales over the past five and three years. Just like we saw how the profit should grow over a period of years, uh, especially my benchmark being 10%, similarly sales also has to grow at 10% and above. Not all companies would have that growth rate. It depends on what sector it is in. Kajari Ceramics, from five years back, it has managed to grow its sales at 10%. In recent three years, there has been a slight decrease in that growth rate to 7%. Sierra Sanitary Wear has grown its sales at 15.3% since 5 years and 13.8% since the last 3 years. So this is a good growth rate. Now sales is a very important figure to look at because this is where the entire company's profitability will start from. All expenses have to be deducted from the sales through which revenues are generated. And if the sales is dropping, then that's a kind of a worry for the company and for the investor as well. We want to see a good sales and profit growth rate over a period of both 5 and 3 years. Sumani Ceramics has seen a 6.5% growth rate in its sales from where it was 5 years back. But in the recent 3 years, the sales has slowed down quite considerably to 0.6%. 
Asian granito, both five and three years is somewhere around 8.9% and 6.1%. HSIL sales over a period of five years was growing at 9.7%. But in the recent three years, it has picked up much faster at 11.4%. So this is how we should be generally looking, what we should be looking for is a figure like this, where over a period of five years, although the sales was growing at 97 in the recent three years, it has speeded up further to 11.4%. We don't want to see a slowdown in the sales. Next, let us look at the return on equity or what is the profit these companies are generating on the shareholders equity or shareholders contribution over the past five years and the latest year. Kajaria Ceramics gave a return of 21.6% over the last five years on average on the shareholders money. So this is a very good value. Anything above 15% or the averages of all these companies, which is somewhere around 14.4% is a good value to consider. Kajaria Ceramics in 2019 gave a return of 15.9% and below its average. This is still okay. Sarah's aver average of last five years was 19.7% and in 2019 the ROE was 17.6% again slightly below its average. So many ceramics over a period of five years the return is 15.3% but in 2019 the ROE has fallen quite considerably to 8.9% a negative value. Asian Granito the averages of the last five is very low at 8.5 percent and in fact in 2019 it has fallen almost by 50 percent to 4.9 percent of its five years average again a negative value hsil2 has seen a very low return on equity of 6.7 percent and 4.5 percent in 2019 not only is it below my benchmark but it is also below the averages of all these companies In this chart, we are looking at return on assets of the last five years on average and what was the return on assets generated in 2019. In this case, the return part is the EBIT, e which means earnings before interest and tax. And the asset is composed of fixed assets of the company plus the working capital now working capital is calculated by reducing or deducting current liabilities from the current assets. This ratio basically helps us understand how much profit or operating profit the company has generated on the assets that is deployed into the business. So this ratio is very helpful in those companies which are asset intensive or which require a lot of investments in fixed assets. Kajaria Ceramics average ROA over a period of five years was around 30% which is a very good value. Anything above 15% as usual is a good value. In 2019 the return on assets was around 23.9% again a very good value. Similar is the case for Sera Sanitary where about 25% ROA for the five years as well as in 2019. So many ceramics, five years average is good at 17.9%, but in 2019 it has fallen to 11.8%, a negative value. Asian Granito, both its average as well as 2019 values are below the benchmark. HSIL has performed very poorly at 8.5% and 7%. So that is why these companies have been discounted so heavily in the market by the investors because these companies are not generating profits on the assets employed or on shareholders money. If the companies don't generate returns or profits on the shareholder money, why would the shareholders want to invest in this company? They would get out of this company and invest somewhere else where those companies are generating a good return on their money. Next, let us look at the return on capital employed. This is also a profitability ratio, which helps us understand how much profit these companies have earned 
on the sources of funds these companies have that is from net worth or from equity or from shareholders as well as from external sources so we are basically trying to understand how much profit these companies are generating on the overall money these companies have received through all sources of funds over a period of five years on average as well as in latest year of 2019 again here too we want it to be above 15 percent at least kajaria ceramics has earned on an average 17.2 percent return on the total sources of funds and 13.9 percent in 2019 a low value considering that it's below my benchmark Sierra Sanitary Wear has managed both for five years as well as in 2019 above 15%. Although this is for Kajaria Ceramics, 13.9% is above the benchmark of all these five companies. So in that case, this is a good value. Somani Ceramics, a very low value of 8.5% over a period of five years on an average basis. And in 2019, it fell to just 4.2%. So now we, when we look at these return ratios or profitability ratios, we understand why these companies have been heavily discounted or why the share price of these companies are falling so much. Because these companies are have not managed to generate returns on uh, the sources of funds, the capital employed and the shareholders money as well as the assets. Asian Granito is a similar case of very low return on uh, capital employed in 2019 of just 2.6%. In fact, HSIL's profitability is also very low at just 2.5%. And on average basis of last five years, in one year we can say that there's a problem in the company and the profitability is low. But if it is very low over a period of five years, then that's a problem and uh, we should avoid that kind of companies. So Asian Granito 2 over a period of 5 years has just returned 4.4%. Now the companies which are asset intensive or very heavily dependent on assets would have a low ROC because their borrowings or if their borrowings are very high that too would affect their return on capital employed. Next we are trying to understand what is the sales generated on the capital employed by the business so here we want the sales to be as high as possible against what the company is employing into the business kajiria ceramics capital employed was 1695 crores on that it managed a sales of 2956 this is a very good we want the multiple to be as high as possible against the capital employed. Sierra has also managed a 1.9 times multiple. Its capital employed into the business was 718 crores. This is the equity plus reserves plus all borrowings done by the company. And it managed a revenue through sales of 1300 crores. So many ceramics multiple was 1.4 times. Asian Granny to 1.5 times and HSIL at 1 times. If you look at HSIL, it has managed to employ 2600 crores of total capital and generate 2700 crores of sales in 2019. So it has managed to generate sales as good as Kajaria Ceramics in that case. Next, let us look at how the companies profits have got converted into cash over a period of five years we want to see the profit the company has shown in their pnl account to be received in cash so that we are sure that this profit does not account for non-cash incomes kajiria ceramics profits for last five years total was 1100 crores and it has received 1300 crores in cash so it has received almost all of its profit that it has shown in cash so this is a good value now many companies do show their profits but don't receive anything or very low in terms of cash that would happen because if the company is generating sales on credit 
and not able to collect payment from their customers on time, that would reduce the cash that comes into the business. So the cash coming in is 22% more than the profit declared by the company. Sierra Sanitary Wear, the cash has a shortfall of just 2% from the profit. So this is also good value considering that it is very nearby to the profit declared by the company over the period of 5 years. So many ceramics, cash coming in is 18% more than the net profit of the last 5 years. Asian Granitos, cash percentage is 135% more than the profit. HSI's profit was 473 crores and cash coming in was 1100 crores over a period of 5 years. That's a 147% increase over its profit. So these are good values. So most of these companies are generating good amount of cash against their profits. In this chart, we are trying to understand out of that cash which was generated in the previous chart from the profit, how much was used in buying assets and uh, how much is left over as free cash to be used in financing activity. Kajaria Ceramics had earned around 1389 crores of cash over a period of 5 years and out of that it has 461 crores left over as free cash meaning it has utilized 67% of this 1389 crores in buying assets or investing in assets. For me, as a benchmark, I would not want my companies to invest more than 50% of their cash generated over a period of 5 years into buying of assets. Only if there is a genuine growth in the company or the company is growing and increasing its sales as well as profitability, then it makes sense to invest more and more into assets so that those assets further can help the company grow in terms of its profitability. Sierra Sanitary Wear 455 crores of cash generated in 5 years out of that it still has 204 crores left over as free cash that is 55% used in buying assets. So many ceramics 398 crores earned in cash but has nothing to show for in free cash and it in fact has a negative free cash of 179 which means not only has the company used up entire 398 crores of cash generated in 5 years in buying assets but over and above that it has invested an additional 179 crores in assets. So companies heavily buying assets over a period of five years or basically investing heavily in assets and I don't want or I don't like companies which invest cash which they have not earned through operating activity into buying of assets. This means that this additional 179 crores has come through borrowings or other some kind of external borrowings. I want my companies to grow in a systematic manner and invest wisely into their assets and also give a part of that cash to the shareholders as a as bonus or as uh, or by doing buyback or even paying off their loans the companies don't need to necessarily invest everything in assets some companies do go in for capital expenditure over a period of three years but then there should be some kind of growth to be that has to be seen or can be seen then that makes sense. Asian Granito 369 crores of cash earned over a period of five years but has negative free cash of 40 crores. Entire cash used in buying assets over and above that 40 crores additionally used in fixed assets. HSIL2 has seen a high cash of 1100 crores but only 163 crores left over as free cash. Entire 86% of this 1100 crores is used in buying assets.
let us look at the free cash position over the last three years five years and the latest 2019 year Kajaria Ceramics five years back had a free cash of 92 crores over a period of three years on average it had cash or rather free cash of 166 crores and in 2019 its free cash has increased to 203 crores so from 92 crores on average over a period of five years to 166 crores to 203 crores it has managed to grow the amount of free cash holding it has so this is what we should be looking at as investors that the company is generating more and more free cash Sierra sanitary wear is also the same situation from 41 crores over a period of five years to 52 crores over a period of three years and in 2019 it had 73 crores of free cash so money on the other hand if you see has negative free cash over a period of five years three years as well as in 2019 of 70 crores so these are all average values of five and three years again a negative overall situation here asian granito over a period of five years it had negative free cash and it did convert in the recent three years to positive cash of around 32 crores asian granitos 2019 free cash flow was around 25 crores so from negative it has managed to turn around to positive so this is a good value hsil five years back had a positive free cash but in the recent three years it has heavily invested in assets to the tune of 84 crores on average every year since last three years and in 2019 it had a free cash of just four crores again a negative value overall earlier we saw how the profit over over five years was converted into cash in this chart we are looking at in 2019 how the company's profits were converted into cash and how much of that was converted into cash kajuria's profit in 2019 was 233 crores and the cash generated from operations was 317 crores so that's a 36 percent higher than its profits so this is a good value we want the cash the company is generating or getting converted from profit to cash should be more Sierra sanitary wear almost similar to what it had shown as profit in 2019 so money's cash generation is 67 or rather 61 percent higher than the profit shown again a good value in fact asian granito and hsil all have managed to convert a huge portion of their profits into cash for asian granito profit shown in 2019 was 22 crores and the cash coming in was 88 crores so why would the company get so much cash almost four times more cash than the profit shown is because if the depreciation that is being charged to the PL account is very high which is a non-cash expenditure meaning no cash is going out of the business for the depreciation for which it is being shown in the PL account then that gets added back when we calculate cash from operations so all of that profit which was reduced due to depreciation gets added back in the cash flow from operations also if the company has received cash from their customers who have not paid earlier then that too gets added back into cash from operations basically cash from operations considers only cash inflows and outflows happening through the operating activity of the business in 2019 so that gives us a very good picture of what is happening in the company in terms of cash flows both Asian Granito and HSIL also have seen a huge conversion of their profits into cash I like those companies which convert most of their profits into cash next we'll look at the 12 months profit after tax and how it can be compared over its five years average 
Krajuria Ceramics, last five years, average profit after tax was around 228 crores. And in 2019, it managed to earn a profit of around 236 crores. That's a 4% above average value. So this is good. We want the current year's profit to be above its average of the last five years. So that shows strength in the growth of profit. Sierra Sanitary Wear, profit was 93 crores in the last five years on average. And in 2019, its profit was 114 crores, again above its average by 22%. Sumani's profit fell by 19% below its five years average. That is why earlier when we saw the fall in its share price, we now we start understanding like why this company's prices have been heavily discounted over its 52 weeks high as well as from three and five years back. This is because these companies' profits have fallen below their averages. They are generating low return on equity, low return on assets, low return on capital employed, and so on. Asian Granito, again, the profit has fallen below its five years average. So when we compare it with a five years average, that would again give us a very clear picture as to what is happening in the company. When we look at just one year value, it can be misleading because in one year, there could be issues in the company for which we should not take decision based on that. But when the five years picture is not good, then that shows inherent weakness in the company's stock or some kind of problem within the company. HSIL's profit of the 12 months has also fallen below its five years average by 13%. So all these three companies, Somani, Asian and HSIL's profits have fallen below their averages of five years. Whereas Kajaria and Sera have managed to gain over and above its five years average. So the more profit it generates, the better the valuation of the company. Next, we are checking out the growth rate in profit year on year that is from 2018 to 2019 how these companies have managed to increase their profits kajaria's profit in 2018 was around 235 cr and in 2019 it was 233 so very near to where it was in 2018 and a fall of around one person so very nearby so i've given it a positive value sera sanitary wears profit of 2019 has increased by 16 person above 2018 whereas all the other three companies somani asian and hsil all have seen a fall in their profits by more than 28 percent for somani 59 percent for asian and hsil has fallen by 14 percent over its 2018 values after looking at the one year five years data we can also analyze the quarterly results how these companies have managed to grow their profits and sales over quarter of the previous year. That is from June 2018 to June 2019. Kajaria Ceramics has managed to grow its sales and its profits by 7% and 12%. So these are good values. Any Anything above 10% should be considered good. And that is also my benchmark. Or we can also take an average of all these companies' growth rates in sales and profit and use that as a benchmark. Sarah's sales has fallen by 5% over its 2018 June quarter and 7% in profit drop. So in the recent quarter, there is some kind of pressure on these companies. So one is... Although sales have increased by 4%, the profit has fa fallen by almost 13%. Asian Granitos sales has increased by 31% and profit has increased by 92%. So whenever we see these kind of growth rates, which is more than 20%, we should investigate whether the base year, that is June 2018 value, had a fall and from there it has increased now in June 2019. So if that is the case, then this values are also not correct. 
because anything about 20% of growth rate is doubtful for all of these companies. In fact, in any sector, if the companies are managing to grow at such high growth rates consistently, then only these figures makes sense. Otherwise, these figures are just inflated because the base year value is low. HSIL2 has seen a drop in its sales by 19%, yet the profit has increased by 583%. As I mentioned, we need to look at the June 2018 value and see whether there was a fall in that profit value and now it has increased. So even a slight increase from there will inflate the percentage growth rate. Although I have given it a positive value, I don't trust this value because it is way too high. Companies generally can't grow their profits at such high growth rates. Only if the base value is low, then you will see this kind of inflated profits. If any of these ratios are not clear or if any person who is watching this video wants to understand more about this ratio, you can comment and I will try to explain further about these ratios. Next, we are looking at how much is the contingent liability on these companies when we compare them against their net worth. And net worth is basically the company's value in the market when the company goes for liquidation. So if the company is to be closed down tomorrow, it will have to sell all its assets and pay all its liabilities. And after paying and clearing all its liabilities, the portion that is left over to be distributed to the equity shareholders or shareholders of the company, that is the net worth of the company, actual value of the company. When all the loans, all the borrowings, all the liabilities are cleared. And contingent liability is are those liabilities which are contingent or dependent on certain situations arising in the future and they may or may not arise but those liabilities are also not accounted in the balance sheet or PNL uh, p &L account and because of that it creates a risk for us in the sense that if the contingent liability is very high as compared to the net worth then that also is a risk factor we need to consider. So as a benchmark, I have kept that I don't want the contingent liability to exceed 20% of the net worth. Kajaria's contingent liability is just 2% of its net worth. Kajaria Ceramics is a 1,500 crores company in terms of net worth or a book value of the company. HSIL2 is around 1,500 crores and its contingent liability is also very low at just 5%. The only company's contingent liability which is very high is Asian Granito at 71% and we don't want to invest or go for companies which have such high contingent liability. Against its total net worth of 451 crores, 332 crores is its contingent liability. The other two companies, Sera and Somani, are well managed in terms of contingent liability and they are somewhere around 700 and 600 crore of net worth. In this chart, we are looking at the debt to equity ratio to understand how much the company has raised money from debt and how much it has received from the shareholders or equity. Here, we don't want the debt to equity ratio to exceed one times. That is, if the company has raised 100 crores through debt and 100 crores through equity, that is all right. But too much of a debt on the company would increase their interest burden or the interest it has to pay on those borrowings. The more the equity, the more profit it goes to the shareholders and less interest burden on the company. Kajaria Ceramics debt was just 120 crores against its equity of 1575 crores. So that's a debt to equity ratio of just 0.1 times. So we want to invest in companies which have as low debt as possible. Sera's debt to equity was, was also very low at just 18 crores against its equity base of 700 crores. So money. 
debt was 574 and equity was 613 cr a debt to equity of 0.9 now it is nearing very uh, it's coming very near to 1 so we have to be careful with this company asian granito at 0.8 and hsil also at 0.8 hsil's debt is 1100 crores so its interest outgo it will be also very high and that is why it will also affect its profitability similar is the case for asian granito where it has to pay more interest cost and its equity hsil's equity is 1500 crores so a debt to equity of 0.8 times now in the next chart few charts will look at what is the burden or how much is the actual burden on these companies because of this high debt now these companies do take debt to grow but then there has to be a staggered growth or a systematic growth in how they are acquiring assets or how they want to grow or how they acquiring other companies a haphazard manner of growth usually leads to downfall in the company let us look at the debt position 3 years back and where the current debt is Kajuria Ceramics debt 3 years back was around 294 crores and they have reduced it now to 120 crores so we want the companies which are reducing their debt even though they have picked up the debt but then now it is reducing so this is a good sign Sera Sanitary well 3 years back it was 35 now it's just 18 crores of debt in turn if you look at the other three companies so many has increased their debt from 243 to 574 crores now Asian Granito's debt is very nearby to where it was 3 years back so it is still better and HSIL debt has also increased from 622 crores to 1178 cr again a negative sign because the company has is in continuously increasing its debt in this chart we are trying to understand the debt on the company against the profit it is generating in 2019 kajarias total debt was 120 crores in 2019 and it managed to generate a profit of 233 crores so it can very easily and comfortably pay off this debt using the current year's profit itself same is the case for sera where its debt was just 18 crores on the profit that it is earning of 115 so very easily it can pay off this debt and it's almost like a debt free company so many on the other case has a huge debt of 574 crores in 2019 and has managed to earn a profit of just 53 crores so even if at this rate if it keeps earning this profit of 53 every year going ahead in the future it will require 12 years to clear off this entire debt and this is very high a company's debt should not be more than according to me more than 7 times its profits ishin granito again a very high debt against the profit it is generating same is the case for hsil where its debt was 1100 crores and the profit generated in 2019 was just 68 crores that's a 16.7 years of profits required to pay off this entire debt now we'll come to the interesting part where we are looking at the interest coverage ratio the companies that we are specifically interested in is somani asian and hsil how is their interest coverage that is the operating profit these companies are generating is that enough to pay off the interest of that year or of 2019 kajaria has generated a profit or operating profit of 384 crores on which it paid an interest of just 16 crores so it is very good the coverage is around 24 times meaning the ebit or earnings before interest and tax is 24.3 times more than its interest burden or interest cost or finance cost same is the case for sera we saw that it had a very low debt as well and its ebit in 2019 was 183 cr 
and on that it has paid just 3 crores of interest and that's a 48 times multiple. So many interest coverage has fallen below 4 which is my benchmark. I want my companies to have an interest coverage of 4 at least. That signifies that their EBIT is at least 4 times more than what they are paying as interest cost. So if for example company's interest payment for 2019 is 1 rupee then their EBIT should be at least 4 rupees. Sumani Ceramics a very low multiple of 3, 46 is their interest cost and 136 is their EBIT. Asian Granito and HSIL2 have shown a very poor interest coverage. Next let us look at the promoter holding and pledge share percentage. We are or we want to invest in companies which have a high promoter holding and if any of the companies promoters have pledged their shares and raised money on that then we don't want a very high pledge on that. For me my benchmark is 20% of pledge share maximum on the promoters holding and also I want the promoter holding to be more than 30%. Kajaria Ceramics in fact all of these companies promoters hold more than 30% and higher the better that shows that if the promoters stake is high then they have very high inten incentive to run the company well and none of these promoters have pledged their shares so they have not kept or they have not exited either directly or indirectly by selling a part of their share. In this chart we are trying to understand what is the cost of raw material as a percentage of sales. Most of these companies would have a similar raw material cost structure and any companies whose raw material cost is very high or very low signifies a red flag. We have to understand why a particular company's raw material cost has decreased compared to its peer group. Kajaria Ceramics total sales was 2,956 crores in 2019 and their raw material cost as such was 34%. So we see most of these companies raw material cost is between 34 minimum and 54 maximum. Asian Granitos has the most expenses on its raw material at 54% followed by Sera at 48% and HSIL at 42%. So this is kind of very nearby to each other and all of these companies values are okay. Next we will look at the debtors and debtors are the customers from whom the company has to collect payment and how much is the total debtors or payment to be collected from customers as of March 2019 and of that how much company has managed to do sales in 2019. So we don't want a very high debtors pending to be collected against the current year's sales. My benchmark in this case is that the total collection should not be more than 30% of the current year's sales. So when the company is not collecting or not efficiently collecting payment from its customers then that basically puts pressure on their working capital requirement. Kajaria Ceramics the total sales done was around 3000 CR in 2019 against which it has to collect as of March 2019 475 CR from its customers that's a 15.8% of the current year's sales. So this is a good value as I mentioned I don't want it I don't want the total collection to exceed 30% of the sales. Sierra Sanitary Wear is around 22.3%. It has to collect 297 crores from its customers as of March 2019 against the sales of 1,353 crores. Asian Granitos collections have gone slightly above 30%. So I've still given it a positive value. Against the sales, it has to collect 400 crores from its customers and HSIL has to collect 588 CR from its customers. So all are good values and manageable. Next, let us look at the data days 
that is within how many days these companies are collecting payment from their customers and is it efficient in this collection kajaria's total debtors were around 15.8% of the sales of 2019 and it was collecting within 59 days from its customers in 2019 three years back it was collecting within 41 days so the number of days of collection has increased so although it has increased from 41 to 59 it is still okay because my benchmark as such is 3 months that is these companies should be collecting payment from their customers within 90 days or approximately 3 months in that scenario both sara and sumani also have managed to collect payment from their customers within 90 days although it is quite high compared to kajaria ceramics but they are still within the benchmark and their collection from the debtors are also slightly about 24% asian granito the collection to be done from customers is quite high at 31% and in 2019 the days it is giving it giving to its customers to pay is 123 way above my benchmark and 3 years back it was at a reasonable level of 72 days hsil again a good value overall so the faster the these companies collect payment from the customers the better it is next let us look at the ratio of debtors to creditors that is debtors are the customers from whom the company has to collect and creditors are the suppliers to whom the company has to pay and we are just trying to understand where or what kind of scenario is there between the debtors and creditors kajaria in 2019 had to collect 475 cr from their customers and pay 339 cr to their suppliers that's a ratio of 0.7 meaning debtors were more or collection was more than what it had to pay to its own suppliers similar is the situation for almost all companies where the collection to collection from the customers were more than what the, it had to pay to their suppliers in both scenarios we can see that if the creditors are more that is if the company has to pay more to the suppliers then it means the, these companies have a kind of a reputation in the market because of which they are able to use the suppliers money and they are also receiving money faster from their customers in terms of debtors so both ways it works whether the debtors are more or the creditors are more in case if the debtors are more it means the customer is efficiently paying its suppliers faster next let us look at the average operating profit margin of the last 5 years of these companies that is the top line profit and also look at the net profit margin these companies have earned in 2019 as well as in the preceding year of 2018 kajaria's opm over the past 5 years on average was somewhere around 17.4% but the npm was quite low in 2019 at 7.7% my benchmark for opm operating profit margin is above 15% and for npm it is above it should be above 10% So even in 2018 the NPM was quite low at 8.7%. Either we can use a standard benchmark of 10% for NPM or we can use an industry average NPM because most of this industry average is less than 10% as we can see. Even Sara has managed an OPM of 15.2% but the NPM is low at 8.5% both for 2018 and 2019. So many average opm itself is very low at 9.9 even asian granitos opm is low at 9.6% and not only is the opm low but even the npm margin is very low considering that these companies are paying high interest cost the npm for 2019 was just 2.7% for somani and for asian it was just 1.8% even 2018 the op uh, the npm was quite low at 4.1 and 4.6 and it has further dropped to 2.7 and 
HSIL, although it had a high OPM of around 14.1, it could not convert that profit, top line profit into the bottom profit, bottom line profit of just 2.6% for 2019 and 3.3% in 2018. So there is a lot of margin pressures on these companies. Next, let us look at the current ratio and the working capital requirement of these companies. This ratio would help us understand how the liquidity position of the company is and can it pay off its current liabilities, meaning those liabilities or those payments which have to be done in the current year by using the assets which can be sold again in the current year. So Kajuri Ceramics current assets were around 1100 CR and it had to pay just 616 CR in the current year as liabilities. So it had an excess working capital of 568 CR. That's a ratio or current ratio of 1.9 times. This is a good value. We want that the companies don't have problems in paying off their current liabilities using the current assets. So most of these ratios should be above one. And in fact, all of these companies are in a good liquid position. In fact, so many had more assets than what it had to pay in the current year to uh, as current liabilities. Next, let us look at what is the total assets on the company's books as of now, including the depreciation. And out of that, how much depreciation has already been detect, deducted from this gross block or gross assets or total assets? Kajaria's total assets as on the books were 1600 CR and total depreciation on that assets were 598 CR meaning 598 CR has been depreciated till date to the PNL account and that is 36% has already been depreciated. Anything above 30% is a good value, but the higher the better, which then would suggest that companies' assets have already been depreciated at a high percentage rate till today. And from here on, there will be less pressure in the PL account for the future depreciations that will be going to it. Sarah Sanitary Ware, again 31% has been depreciated on the total assets of the company of 445 CR and total 139 has already been transferred in the past years in the PNL account. Com comparing this with Somani and Asian, we see a very low accumulated depreciation on their books. Somani has 808 CR of assets and only 98 has been transferred to the PNL account in the past years. That's just a 12% depreciation till date. So we can say that almost more than 700 CR of assets still needs to go to the PL account in the future years. So there will be constant pressure on the PL account in the future years as well. And that will bring down the NPM of this company. Asian Granito, also a very low 15% of depreciation transferred in the past year. So almost 400 and some odd figure still needs to go to the PL account. HSIL again a very low depreciation, accumulated depreciation till date. Out of this 2400 CR of assets, only 478 has gone to the PL account. So the balance still needs to almost 80% of this 2428 CR needs to go to the PL account in the future years. Now the depreciation that is being charged depends on when the assets were added, if these assets were added in the very latest years or very just few years back, then this depreciation rate is okay or the total dep accumulated depreciation is okay. But if these assets were spread out over the past few years, then this is a negative value. In this chart, we are looking at the net block, that is the net assets of the company. Net assets, net assets are calculated by removing out accumulated depreciation from the total assets or gross block, which we saw earlier in the previous chart. So net assets are those assets on the company's balance sheet 
after removing the accumulated depreciation. So now the net block would be deducted every year. Depreciation would be deducted from net block every year and transferred to the PL. With the gross block, we were just trying to understand what is the total assets on the books of the company till date which have not been completely depreciated. And here we are trying to understand what is the depreciation being charged every year by these companies on their net block. That is, what kind of pressure would be going to the PL account as depreciation expenses every year. So most of these companies' depreciation rate is somewhere between 6 and 8 percent. The higher the better, but generally all of these companies are depreciating at these rates. Kajaria's total assets as of date after removing accumulated depreciation is 1078 CR. On that, in 2019, it had transferred 89 CR, that is 8% of 1078 to its PL account as expenses. So this 89 CR creates pressure on the PL every year. Sarah had also transferred around 23 CR out of the assets or net assets of 305 CR. Same goes for all of these companies. In this chart, we are looking at the inventory turnover ratio of the latest year as well as how the inventory was converted into sales or how many times over the inventory got converted into sales. Kajuria's turnover was somewhere around 7.5 times, meaning whatever company's inventory holding was as of 2019 in the balance sheet, the sales was 7.5 times more than that inventory. So the higher the inventory turnover, the better it is. It shows that the company is churning around its inventory at a high rate. As you can see, the first three companies, Kajaria, Sera, and Somani, all the three companies are churning over their inventory at more than six times. Whereas Asian and HSIL are converting its inventory at a low turnover of four times or approximately between 4.1 4 and 4.8 times. So this concludes my analysis as far as graph is concerned. We'll go back to the Excel sheet and give it a score and then try to understand which of these companies have scored the highest points and which companies we should be avoiding. As far as I'm concerned, we already know which companies we should avoid and which are the companies that are most likely good for investments in terms of our overall good health of the company. So after giving scores to all of these companies, Kajaria Ceramics seems to be having the highest score along with Sera Sanitary Wear. The other three companies have scored below 100 and both Kajaria and Sera are way, too, way ahead of the other three companies. So I have given them the score based on positive 5 to negative 5 depending on if the ratio is within the benchmark it would get the positive score and if the ratio is above the benchmark then it will get a negative scoring. The better the ratio the better the score and the worse the ratio the worse the score the more negative marking it will get. So I won't be analyzing this numbers all over again as I've already done it in the graph. I would be leaving the screen on for five seconds each so that anyone interested in noting down the values or looking at these values can do so.
So after looking at all these ratios and giving them uh, corresponding values according to what the ratio is, I have grouped all of these ratios into six different categories or matrix. These matrix have been given weightages according to what according to the importance of that metric. For me, efficiency is very important. So I've given it a weightage of six. So every ratio, whatever value each ratio gets, that is multiplied by six to get the overall weightage value of that particular matrix. For me, efficiency metric is very important. This particular metric helps us understand the overall management of the company through using different ratios like asset turnover which would help us understand how the assets are getting converted into sales that is the amount of assets employed into the business how much sales it is generating how much contingent liability is there against the net worth is the company managing its contingent liability efficiently is there a very high debt against the equity does the company have a good interest coverage on the EBIT or on the borrowings it has done? What is the debt against the profit these companies are earning in a particular year? Against the sales, how much is still to be collected from the customers? How fast is the company collecting payment from its customers in terms of debt days? How well is the inventory been being turned over into sales what is the accumulated depreciation what is the accumulated depreciation of uh, as a percentage of gross block is the company has the company depreciated its gross block enough in the past years and what is the depreciation rate on the net block all of these are efficiency metrics the cash flow metric is the second highest weightage for me in terms of converting or conversion of profits into cash. This is very important. How efficiently that cash is invested in fixed assets and how and what portion of that cash is used in the financing activity. Growth metric has been given a weightage of four. That is each ratio of inside the growth metric is multiplied by four to get the total matrix value sales growth over five years over three years yoy sales growth growth in profit from its five years average all of these are accumulated inside the growth matrix written matrix gets a weightage of three this metric includes earnings yield what is the profit companies are generating on the price we are paying for that share what is the return on equity over five years over the latest year? ROCE, ROA, OPM, NPM, and so on. Solvency metric includes the promoter shareholding, pledge if any, current and quick ratio. And finally, valuation comes last because first we want to understand whether all of these ratios are good enough for us to buy into the company and whichever company gets the highest weightages in these first four or five metrics then we have to look at the valuation the valuation is not very important until and unless the company's overall ratio is good so valuation ratios we have price earning price cash price book price to free cash flow price to sales peg for both five years growth in profit and three years growth in profit so all of these metrics in all total gives us a very good picture of what the health of the company. So Kajuria Ceramics has got the highest efficiency of 312 points along with Sera Sanitary Wear. And the lowest efficiency was seen in Asian Granito in terms of negative 18 value and HSIL at 96 points overall. Cash flow statement was very good for Asian Granito and HSIL, meaning 
most of its cash or rather most of its profits were getting converted into cash. Sierra Sanitary Ware has a negative cash flow metric value that needs to be looked at why the company is not managed to convert most of its profits into cash. Although uh, Sierra Sanitary Ware's cash flow metrics is not very bad, but compared to peer groups, other companies have done much better. So many ceramics also has a zero value because it's net even in terms of getting negative values and positive values in all ratios of the cash flow metrics. The best cash flow metrics was for Asian Granito and HSIL. In terms of growth, written metrics, solvency metrics, Kajoria Ceramics and Sera have done the best. Asian Granito has performed poorly in written metrics, getting the lowest mat values along with HSIL. Growth metrics also was very poor for HSIL and Asian Granito. In fact, Sumani has got a negative value of 20 in growth metrics. Anyone wanting to look at these values can again look at those graphs of the cash flow and the growth metrics. In terms of solvency, again, Kajaria and Sera are getting the highest values. Finally, if you, someone wants to buy into these companies, we have to look at the valuation where these companies' shares are trading at compared to different variables like earnings, cash, and so on. So in terms of valuation metric, the most lowest valued or valuation wise the cheapest one is Asian Granito and HSIL at a total 40 points. So although they are the cheapest ones available compared to different variables, their other ratios are not matching up. So it does not give us much confidence into buying these two companies. So the only other three companies left over are Sumani, Sera and Kajaria. Out of this, these companies are very well managed in terms of different metrics. Although they may be expensive, we can always time our ent entry gradually, buy at each fall, break up how much we want to buy into a company into multiple parts and then with every fall, uh, with every negative news in the economy or in the market, there would be some kind of a fall of 6%, 5%. So we can buy gradually as it keeps falling. And this way we can accumulate the stocks of these companies. So finally, Kajuria Ceramics has got the first rank, Sera at second, and HSIL at third because it has got overall 220 points. Asian Granito should be avoided according to me. If someone has a different take on it, do let me know in the comment section. It has got the lowest score at 88 points and Somani Ceramics comes forth at 207 points. Thank you for watching this video.